very excited to talk with uh, Dr. Anthony Trovato. Um, I'm going to be talking of, talking to you, Anthony, not just ca calling you doctor if that's okay, but you've got an impressive bio. I'm going to have to read this out because there is so much into it. Um, so Anthony has completed a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition with a bio concentration. He also completed a Bachelor and Master and Doctorate and PhD in Natural Medicine from Quantum University. And he has been an on-site nutritionist and biological dent dental biologic dental assistant at Meeting House Dental Care since 2003. Anthony's passion is helping others improve overall health through education regarding whole food nutrition, not relying entirely on supplements. I love that. Although supplements have their place, I do believe in that too. With mm -hmm. emphasis on weight management, GI health, mitochondrial support, systemic inflammation, pH balance, and glycemic control. Thank you so much, uh, Anthony, for uh, coming to uh, doing this podcast with me. I am very excited. I know we came across through Quantum University, and I really mm -hmm. um, value the work that you were doing. I think it's really uh, We were talking uh, earlier about uh, how, how hard it is to find a biologic, a dental practice these days. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you go to cancer, that is uh, an important, uh, you know, part of the process if you want to achieve long-term health after going through cancer t treatment. So when you started out explaining to people, like, what does that actual mean, being a biologic dental practice? And, and how do you fall into it as well? Um, like you said, there's, there's, there's not many of us cropping up, which is good. Um, when near you, there are websites on your code or your state to see if there, there's any. You know where we are, are in, in, in Pennsylvania, there, there's and over the course of, of like the, the entire, e there's uh, uh, six dentists on our street with very few biologic dentists. And really, really all it is is a mentality shift of yes. seeing the materials that are being used, patient education, um, after of their education, um, um, slowly by accident. And years ago, he, he got very sick, not, not because he ever had any in his mouth, ever placed any as a practice, but briefly, patient after patient, he, he was at several patients a day, every day, and um. He just lived by, little little. and by the time we figured out, we then had to go back in and, and learn. And had, couldn't get him better, and then go back in. And, so we looked up and ourselves from amalgams. We, again, we, we had no idea, and little, little by little, you start learning and going to them. And we we were going a really but the more you attend, they cells and fluoride and and oral micro and no idea about even though we were at least I it is just kind of extra and thought to put together. And this was to just like a slow a little unread of become who we are today. It was it was so nice switch immediately. Just the, that's how we got started. Started our, our main doctor because we didn't know any better at the time. Yeah, yeah, I totally uh, resonate with that. Like when you talk about the fluoride, um, you know, when I started mm -hmm. reading about nutrition and what I could do to create long term health after cancer, I came across the fluoride, um, you know, uh, a theme, and I just I didn't know anything about it. In actual fact, one of my uncles was a dentist in Brazil, and I used to go to see him. And my dad, although he didn't pursue that for a long time, he graduated as a dentist. So, um, mm. of course, I started uh, not uh, buying uh, toothpaste with fluoride. And when my kids go to the dentist, I ask them not to add the fluoride after. And it was really funny because my daughter right. said to me in front of the dentist, Mommy, are you going to tell him, like, why you don't want him to put the fluoride on us? And I was like, well, <laughs> he's a dentist. Yeah. And 
sure. you know, each person believes in different things. I've asked mm -hmm. him not to put it on you and, and that's okay. You know, sometimes you just have to, you know, just to stick to your ground and, and do what you believe, but you don't, you know, you don't need necessarily to start preaching to people, right? Because he was the dentist. Mm -hmm. uh, but just before we jump onto the nutrition, talk uh, about the fluoride, which I think it's something that everybody could do from home right now, right? And and just, and I'm briefly, I know it's a mm -hmm. huge subject as well, but if you sure. could educate people on, you know, on, on what's happening with the fluoride. Quickly. Like whenever we do um, and we're speaking to other dentists, et cetera, uh, if I just started the tongue, fluoride's a poison, instantly everyone gets mad. I leave that, that whole conversation in of it. it could potentially do systemically to the vision mm -hmm. because what I do, do professional intervention, it, it is all absolutely solution to what they view as for your teeth that needs to be strong and might have a better way then they you just don't call it a poison right off the bat they tend yeah to, um the first thing i don't like when they say decay is a deficiency of the flossing and the only reason why we're getting decay treatments or, or the toothpaste or anything and just certainly not the right way to look at it. Well, to be fair to like dentistry, what it mm -hmm. does is it, it creates a new layer on the thing called floral appetite, which can of of your tooth. And it, it does create a barrier than what your tooth would have been able to. My, my point would be though, why is this tooth stronger to re Resist all this emphasis on why, why don't we just maybe handle the and, then, and whether the fluoride was there or not, not you should be up more towards seven or neutral majority of the day and then and the fluoride matter if the fluoride there or not resist and you can now have strengthening the enamel wall we're not putting something we're getting rid of the acid you're changing so you're not just letting something fluoride on the teeth and telling them that will protect them. It doesn't. Yeah. Anyway, usually you still get cavity. The environment is bad enough. Yeah. So it's well, almost like the supplement thing, right? Like you said, it's like take the supplement, you know, put the fluoride and you don't have to do anything about it. You know, take the supplement and you don't have to change your diet. You don't have to exercise. You don't have to look after yourself. I mean, like you said, you know, I believe that right. supplement is a place to it. But if you're only relying mm -hmm. on that, and I have been a, a, a victim of that when I didn't want to take any responsibility of my health. And I would go to health shops and say, you know, what can I take? And I'm exhausted. Like, can you please give me something? You know, some sort of right. magic thing. You know, like, And I was taking six supplements, um, you know, before my cancer diagnosis. And I didn't realize that in actual fact, one of the supplements, which was iron, it was accelerating my cancer. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, it is, is kind of, it, like you said, you know, there is a place to it. Uh, I mean, the fluoride, of, of course, it, it's a, a, a different thing, um, but it's not the only thing that you can do. Uh, so what could people do? Like, of course, there are these days in the market, there are plenty of toothpastes that don't contain fluoride and don't contain a lot of the chemicals that are really harsh, you know, to our oral health. Um, and, you know, we've been doing that for the last four years, you know, like my kids can't even tolerate a normal toothpaste. Now, they would say like, mom, like, this is just too strong for me, you know, but of course, right. we almost like get our bodies used to that kind of stuff. And then when we, you know, get ourselves, you know, not used to it, when we use it again, we're like, oh my God, you know, like this is, this is actually, it doesn't feel good. Right. Right. Yeah. For sure. Or they do instead of or it will the question yeah so so would you yeah. suggest that people just buy a toothpaste that doesn't contain fluoride and uh, start sure. using that of course. Ago, you or we kind of had like kind of show people that they can really make their own of course but there are way more products on the market than regular 
grocery stores now that yeah just four or five six years ago thing in town back back then was, was uh, um and and uh, they're still there tom so there's some, some issues with fluoride being there are tons of good products out there for sure. Look at like a toothpaste and look at the ingredients. It's yeah. The first thing we normally look for is fluoride out of the, the uh, out of the ingredient list. So we look to include by far the most soda. Um, having baking soda by carbonate, it'll say on the back. So if you're trying to control acids in the mouth, just instantly eliminates the, the acids say, to to to, to um, quickly. Even if other like maybe someone's diet's not, not perfect yet, you instantly help the saliva uh, function. Yes. Um, there is a there's a myth that baking soda is too abrasive. That was lived in the eighties. Just completely untrue. Baking soda. Um, anyone who wants to, they can look, look it up. There's a find on Google uh, list a whole bunch of tea. baking sodas. A seven. It is yeah. very very aware of the gum. Um, so yeah. all, all of that else information it helps the saliva. Um, there's other ingredients you to are including calcium and phosphate. The appetite, which is basically a fancy word. There. Um, there's things for the aloe and CoQ10 sometimes, a lot of the like, neem oil and, and, and other things for kind of, all, all of those are fun. The, the biggest things that are different from one another in order to sell a product, if we'll have charcoal, one will have things yeah. for the gum oils, like nothing is really that much. You have to just have their like little niche, they have baking soda. Uh, that's the ones we prefer. If you have yeah. a product that you, you really like, and it just, just takes some baking soda and kind of dump it, right, you can just add your own ingredient fairly. You can use whatever toothpaste you're already using. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. So people can apply that straight away. Like I said, even when their yeah. diet is not you know, 100% yet. So now moving on to the mm -hmm. diet, which is your thing, which I think mm -hmm. it's beautiful because I am so uh, passionate about that because, you know, I, after my cancer diagnosis, food became my medicine. And I would, I, I still look mm -hmm. at each type of food thinking, you know, this is my medicine every single day. And, you know, I never thought from the perspective of oral health as much, but uh, when I look at myself right. before cancer, I had receding gum, which I know a lot of people suffer from mm. with. Mm. And I also had um, a lot of sensitivity on my teeth. So let's say if I drank cold water or if I went to the dentist, I would be like, like scream, you know, like, oh, I just, you know, and, and they're cleaning your teeth. And I remember that the first time I went to the dentist after I had changed my diet, I was like, he's like, oh, you don't have any, you know, your gums are not receding anymore. And I was like, really? And I didn't feel mm -hmm. any sensitivity. Like I was like, how is this possible? And I was like, oh my God, like all mm -hmm. the benefits that the diet changes that I had made, you know, I didn't even realize it was affecting my whole entire body, including my oral health. But mm -hmm. talk a little bit, about, I know that there is so much to talk about, but you know, there's some, I think, misconceptions around oral health and nutrition. Like what, you know, how, how do you go about advising people when they come to the clinic and they are having issues with tooth decay and, and, you know, even things like, you know, receding gum, I know it's a different problem, but, you know, things that are most common. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll get, because first I wanted to talk about the story and you just said some maybe common misconceptions and it might. I best get your scenario about how you had some receding gum. They kind of went away. Um, dentistry, or one we hear a lot, is that as you're brushing your teeth too hard, they call it completely untrue. You can't wear away it, unless it was like a like steel. Never really made any sense. 
So we hear patients all through bristles and things like that. You know, the softer bristles might, might be, they might, might feel, especially if you already have, have a lot of recession in the first place. Um, this is but long story short, it's almost, almost it's always due to vibration forces from your teeth coming together and the gums pull away with it. But the tooth and your gum pulls away the structure yeah. that was under your gum a second ago anymore. It's dense. So that the, the cold water and wind and, and things like that. Sure, the, the goal is to stop the recession from your diet a little bit, you can now kind of read of that used to be very, very hypersensitive. You get your gums to go all the way back to where they start sensitivity that you, you were um, probably with a lot of the changes that you were necessarily like fully breaking the gums, but it made that, that sensitivity and that sensation a lot better because that could your tooth structure was open as they were before. Yeah. Um, that was just one of the misconceptions that we hear. Uh, should I do the nutrition part now? As well? yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so I'm in, and this is part of our new patient exam. Raise. We have them up on, on the screen so we can kind of, kind of show them. Okay. This is your upper right, your upper left. This is ready here, crown here, give them like an orientation of what's going on, really strong emphasis on being more, which from, from our, our teeth over and over again, but in order for conservative, we, we do want to give the patient prevent the decay from happening and a lot, a lot of it doing at home. Yeah. Because it says like, Oh, the dentist takes care of my, my test every six months or so. so <laughs> and by the breaks or it's hurting, conservative, you have to do a filling or something along those. It can be prevented from, from the very beginning. Regular or cleanings from time to time. That would be a much more long term. Um, and really comes into play after we, we talk about the base. The main goal is we're trying to the mouth mm -hmm. and then we're trying to figure out now. I already mentioned the baking soda does that, but the long-term solution is minerals that are in our saliva that, that our yeah. saliva has. So most, because their teeth are made out of minerals and it's teeth, but their critical ability to remove acids we have a saliva and you might get some washing effect but you really lose the that acidic balancing yeah and the diet so this is where we have to get more minerals and maybe if it's not where us talk and they immediately change everything and some home care techniques can certainly help maybe Maybe until the saliva is a little bit more support. Um, this is just like any with someone. Usually, the patient doesn't bite, but, but little by little, night by night, them get more more minerals into the system. If you, I mean, I guess where we could talk about where the colorful vegetables that would be a predominant yeah. source. Of yeah, almost, almost no sugar. They're gonna have um. Doesn't mean that you have to be a vegetarian or a vegan. Important, and then you can do other healthy fats: avocados, nuts, seeds, and mm -hmm. mineral drops. You can put in your drinking water. Institutions like not eating white salt anymore. Kind of color, which is all the flakes of minerals to be broths that you can make yourself or buy in a broth, where it's basically the same thing except your bones. Um, even meat, but red, red meat has a lot of, um, um, McDonald's cheeseburger, you know, you know grass yeah. fed wilds. So as long as the quality 
is there. It doesn't really matter, but we do like people to concentrate just because relatively they're 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 good from and then you, you can build a lot of minerals from that um and then we want to tell, tell people with the minerals and they're getting in, in the baking so night time the other thing that they should consider is actually coming from in the first, first place so the whole goal, goal is to not have it. our main problem is if you turn on an mostly Sensodyne, but you know, Crest and Colgate, they immediately blame acidic liquid, lemons, wine, apple cider vinegar, and, and that's not really where the source of it mostly because it would just never sit in long enough to like yeah. erosion. It's just a poor way to think about it. But that's what most of the studies they're doing is that erosion study they're literally taking putting it in lemon water and then wait and they're saying oh look, look it broke down that have the tooth sit there in contact 48 hours it might break down their mouth for 48 hours it just wouldn't work that way it always is how can we have a tooth here but not here because if it's wealthy and you're drinking it, why would it be just on one side and not the other? It's, it's it's food debris. It's not liquids. It's not. It's when we chew something, it gets mushed right between the teeth and it sits there. Coming from us letting the bacteria eat along. Um, and if we're, we're talking, unfortunately, it's any kind kind of carbohydrate foods that's what the bacteria or fat actually they don't know what to do with an avocado feed off of some kind of carbohydrate mm -hmm. approach dentistry is we would just tell people like like don't that's still a good recommendation sitting around eating candy and sugar all day long so it's kind of the unassuming carbohydrates Pasta, rice, cereal, chips, prep the snack foods, mm. and processed foods. To eliminate all of them for most people, hopefully moderate out some of the that way. But whenever we talk about dental nutrition, we just need people in our mouths. Don't really have to tell what the food is. So mm -hmm. they eat it. So people get really healthier carbohydrate, like a, a sweet potato and French fries, yeah. or an, an apple is healthier. But if you, you chew up an apple and stick it in your, your mouth, you have no idea it's, it's an apple. They're just eating. And so there's literally no difference. So is moderate some of the, the more, more. And then it's all at the time. I mean, game how about hydrate in the mouth and feel it. So sure, if you get something like says, "Oh, I just I floss it out when I notice it," good. Get get that stuff out of there. But most see the like the really smushed up piece of bone and it sits there. And the bacteria, we got to separate the bacteria in the food. Yeah. And I think, like you said, like people don't have to go super extreme and become vegetarian or plant based or anything like that. But oh. again, like when I look at what I did before cancer it was like I ate an excess amount of meat and dairy and there was little mm -hmm. space to eat vegetables and fruits and legumes yep. and nuts mm -hmm. and, and, all the, you know, all the, all the variety that our guts need and our whole health needs. So. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the balance that our Western society believes that we should have, it's, I, I don't believe it is a balance. I also drank alcohol, which is, you know, super acidic and it's going to create havoc inside of you. So it is kind of common sense, but at the same time, you know, when you, I believe that people wake up one day starting to have real problems because we are, we are led to believe that balance, it is drinking 
you know, four days out of seven days, eating meat in every other, you know, in every, in every yeah. other, other meal, uh, eating dairy, you know, all the time and just eating a piece of broccoli and a piece of apple. Like right. this One is not balanced. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, that is not balanced. And people, you know, people think like, well, but I eat healthily. Well, no, because there isn't a lot of variety, you know, in, in yeah. your diet. And, and I think that's, you know, it's like like I said, it's just taking these small steps towards creating that variety and and thinking about it, isn't it? The moderation of it. You're not going to be eating f- right. five apples. You know, you're going to eat maybe right. one, you right. know, one apple, and then you eat something else, or you know, like a bit of nuts, or you know, just kind of creating that variety throughout your day. Yeah, and I, I think when you said balance, that could, could you could kind of go overboard in in. A- I think that's the best thing about dental, how someone wants to eat, unless they're they or have to make some changes, but, but no matter how you can always make it work with the concept. So like I, I always use myself as an example, vegetarian, but I do eat a large amount throughout the week where you could have a vegetarian healthier just because they're not eating meat and Again, for dental health, health, breakfast and rice for lunch and pasta for dinner, all they did all day long is for you. So, yeah. so you know, no systemic health about that type of diet, in my opinion. But for dental health, it's the bacteria, the food that it likes, vegetable or fat or protein with it as much as acid release from the bacteria will switch to vegetarian and they, there's a right and a wrong way to do that of course they eat versus a vegetarian who eats like vegetables and kind of the, like the whole food that we're looking at way to do it and that would be beautiful for you yeah yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. And I was really interested to talk about, you know, uh, you mentioned on 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 your website and, and I read it on your bio that uh, you have, you know, you focus on em- an emphasis on weight management. How does weight management and oral health, you know, correlate and come together? Um, so if someone was just cut as, as a new patient and health and oral health, I do only get a new patient, so branching off and all doesn't always fit. So usually they're coming back, not that, that like initial exam where we're talking about. That. Um, but yeah, if they're interested in learning about or anything like that, that would be like their neckly. Um, um, but weight loss are really health. Once you start getting them more to diet, it almost just indirect they should always be brushing and flush should be established of course because even healthy food but if you can really get someone to to you of good nutrition and it's not, not an long enough where it just becomes the way of life drop drastically because they might have made the choice to lose some weight and they're going to the immune systems or supported, and then all those are dropped because they're not eating as much progr, they're decreasing the carbohydrate, it might not have been because they care about their teeth health. There's such a yeah. large overlap in, in someone to correct a lot, a lot of systemic issues, someone to correct, you know, oral versa. Some people might not care that they're 20 really care that they have nine cavities like, okay let's stop this from happening in the changes they're brushing and flossing better they're getting in like a year and they're like i lost 10 it's really really cool to kind of see that that, that interplay yeah so at what point like would you say that you know throughout the years that you've been working with people that people 
just draw that fine line. Now, every time I come and see you guys, I have a cavity. I don't want to keep paying for this. It's just a nightmare. I don't want to go through the pain and all the rest of it. Like, what else can I do? You know, do you see that people are changing a little bit of their mindset around it? Because, of course, you know, one of the hardest things for people to do is really to change their habits, right? Is to change what mm -hmm. they are doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, at yeah. what point, you know, do you feel like people are starting to actually change and making that mindset shift? Do they have to be, you know, in the suffering or, you know, coming to the dentist all the time? I, I guess it could go both ways. Coming to us, we're certainly not the first dentist. And so if, if they already have had a, a lot of money into their team, teeth and or don't like the drill some sometimes we don't have just that was motivation enough that, that they're driven them to say like i, I want to prevent a drill yeah. in my mouth um, um it's their tactic but like we, we didn't do it just dentistry fear because of poorly done dentistry and they're fortunate for our profession but we hear these stories it was try not to repeat it in our, our office for sure and techniques and technology that is set up um ease the patient comfort like or anesthesia device we don't even get regular feel i mean all sorts of things because i know how trauma um yeah. but preventative enough now to have established us dental practice long enough where most are are finding us on purpose, caring about, about their overall health. You fit into my lifestyle, of, and I have an acupuncturist, and I see it. I'd like to see a biologic dentist as well. 15 years ago, kind of looking over, some, reading what they are, they are telling me, and we're starting from ground zero and you shouldn't have nine cookies every day and more. Um, and people are intakes and their writing is like really the and do this and there's like a hundred vegetables and they're going off how good their diet is, which is awesome. People coming in and we don't really need the military changes. We're just kind of showing the nation why it works, why it applies to the decay from there so um lucky to have a very like-minded um and that, that helps communicate um well because we never want have to have someone can we put their x-rays up on the screen and we say did you or 50 percent mercury and they're like, like no they're fine um the conversation is already they're asking the question and tell me more this. So yeah, I wouldn't say we would have to do much decay is, is a good idea in the long, long run. And, and most of the even if they have decay on that first them we're seeing them okay, we can fix that, not have this happening again and most of the time we don't, we don't see very many like, like day problems and if we do the second step that we would run through, which is talk about the bacteria in the mouth. Yeah. Because if you in a while, your bacteria is to do with the acid and the food and the home care. But for those people with extremes, where they're just, I keep having bad decay off teeth, they would tell you that it's genetics, which is, um, they would, would just give up. And when you, and when you, now we start to talk about maybe they have, have an unreal ratio. And on top of all of that aspect of it, they might want to look into it to, to, to reframe how the back that might not put them at such, such a pre just constantly Position. developing decay. And that's sure. Um, um, and that's how we can kind of just that downward spiral viral every time I come in here if for solutions for that person and we never just say um, there's 
always another layer there that they have the ability to to prevent decay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you talked about something so important about the genetics. I think there's so many people that still live in the uh, you know, in, in the world thinking that, you know, I've got these genes of, you know, parents were diabetics, my, which is my case, my dad, you know, was diabetic, my both grandparents were diabetics, you know, of course, I had the genes and I had gestational diabetes, gestational diabetes, as you know, mm -hmm. we talked about, that. but at, at that time, you know, I, when I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes, I just kind of thought, oh, you know, what a, what a pain, you know, like I have to change all my diet, you know, I've got this baby inside me, right. you know, like this, really inconvenient, I'm working, you know, and on all the rest of it. But it wasn't until I had cancer that I realized that, you know, it, it's nothing. Well, there is a, a percentage of the genes, but there is so much I can do about it. You know, I don't sure. see myself as somebody who will get diabetes. You know, I see myself as somebody who is doing everything that I can every single day not to get cancer again, not to get diabetes, you know, like just to create long term health. I mean, how much yeah. percentage it is? Uh, the ge genetics are related to, you know, oral health and, and, and tooth decay and things like that. Yeah. Um, I would say the good news is more than um, like cancer, because I obviously talked to the environment and, and things like that, that I'm a cancer expert, but there are plenty of types of cancer to, to some genetic mutation teeth. Not, not true at all. Um, yeah. Um, like pass down on bad, bad tooth genes, even through, through epigenetics. Like, like there's just no, no. Now, admittedly, there are enamel defects like that. That's a little bit different. Um, but get their teeth, and there's just spot addition spots, or literally, you can see the dentin room. Like, like that's just what it, it's not. On, common but that's not because like the kid typically when you're looking for that, that genetic myth and like mental problems versus decay rate so higher than, than that person's decay rate and where's all of it, it unless of course they just, just like never foundation stuff is, is there yeah. um, um but about bacteria um there's like one decay is the topic there's a couple of bacteria that kind of got infamously blamed or strep there's other ones but that's the one that everyone harps on discovered um but if you have a very hands and they're going to eat that carbohydrate rapidly and, and produce a large amount of like acid now you could have other eat that same sugar and don't really release any acid or release hydrogen peroxide these are the mm -hmm. people that have, have now people so a lot, a lot of this you're never going to have and things, things like that but if we can find balance and for with some of the extremes and the out is because the people but usually it's mom and dad because they have the most uh, kid but if they have very very bad teeth it is growing up everything they're doing falls licking pacifiers and putting them back in this every single time they do it the the oral bacteria of the kid so right away one happened but a lifetime of this and this kid to have decay and they're like oh look mom and dad had, had decay and it's really just just the passing on of which the silver lining here is back to Bacteria that can always be positively direction with the products that have oral probiotics and your crowd bugs like the strep mutants, just not artificial strains in your mouth. Is every time you brush your teeth, all of them go away and in about 30 minutes. So you're never really like, like sterilizing your your mac a little bit and they mm -hmm. go away and they come back etc away relatively that's in that 30 minute gap of when bacteria you put that, that little min the bad guy 
guys come back, there's less spots of inhibition. You're crowding them out. And, but they say that about after three, three months, it span for, for more of the good guys crowding out now some of the bad guys that were close. And then you should stop. You don't for the rest of your life. You do that nice three months. And now the hope is, is when you brush your teeth, they are the ones that are returning because you've changed that environment. You're just as like a like a fresh, or you have to take an antibiotic, or you get changes in there. They're yeah. always available, but I've been taking this for three years, and like that, um, it's really just a waste of money after yeah. a while. Take hold of of the of the probably love that as the as a dispel of the more in our favor than we think but that's the bacteria being shared yeah, yeah. So it's like i said it's just everyone, create, create a different baseline isn't it for the long yeah. term kind yeah. of thing like and you know in three months you can you can change like you know in your in your, your gut will be changed and then therefore your oral you know yeah. Like the yeah. whole thing is change, isn't it? Like it's, you know, apparently our gut regenerate every thirty days, you know. So, so sure. it's the same thing. But it's just, you know, if you're looking for the quick fix, uh, it's mm -hmm. just going to be temporary. You know, it's not going to be a long term thing. Mm -hmm. Comment about the bacteria, um, not just as adults. If you are sharing, or maybe you have a spouse and you're sharing kisses like one person's oral hemic the other one and like and have really really bad teeth like you should you should encourage your partner to also and maybe the oral probiotics and get rid of some because if they have really bad teeth and you have great only a little bit of a matter of time before you start affecting them is the best guys usually are a little bit more, more very good guys so if I, I have great teeth right now but can, can, can to maintain that and it's a neurotic tendency but I, I try real spoons and, 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 and glasses with people I don't be too much about the oral, oral microbiome your spouse and, and, and you're and you're pretty confident the, the way um, but you have to be cautious with that thing that we are constantly sharing i think the 30 yeah. to forty thousand bacteria can one three second kiss um and that wow yeah 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 well um before i met my husband he used to smoke and when he met yeah. me he stopped smoking but uh and he used to have uh you know cavities every time we would go to the dentist but since we've changed yes. our diet he doesn't have it anymore i mean it's incredible how I mean, again, what we did, you know, it wasn't something that we focus on, but because we right. changed our diet, you know, it just happened to to have an overall effect on us. But Anthony, tell us mm -hmm. how we find you um, and, you know, websites. I'm going to add the links below. And in particular, uh, talk to us about the course that you have. Um, so, so the office that I work for is Meeting Pennsylvania. Um, and the uh, uh, the web dental.com and that would be the web of the biologic dentistry and if you go, go on that web um, there are, are multiple drag down every topic you could possibly pages were written by me but, but um, the people that are just finding our website that is mercury fluoride uh, root, root canal as well yeah. so it's a really good reading source if someone would go biologic dentistry and find mm -hmm. out more all of our information like content that's all on the website as well if somebody specifically um the easy um if you email the dental place that's me directly it would be my last name Trivada, A T O. the word nutrition you can email mm -hmm. you back and Forth, but Travada Nutrition does go directly to me and I and anyone has. 
um, website as well, TrueVitalNutrition.com, but out of the health and weight loss and everything. Um, and the, the, this really got built out of find their office and they live nowhere near us. Drive from New York and Maryland and Baltimore. You're not flying over. Probably plenty of dentists in California. Um, but not, not all of dentists and the ability to really emphasize that. They're certainly going to help you with the mercury. And the, they wanted to have, have kind of like come get into our building. So we did a couple. It just didn't really work with the schedule. So we literally just, just dump all of our knowledge of into this place that people that can't see us now and and, and um, the different chapters to figure out not, not just not today about the acids and the and the um, but it covers all, all eight reasons that are now the acid control is by far to look at but there's things called dent there's lack of saliva like, like dry mm -hmm. mouth all of these little things that we talk about, each one has in the history of decay. So at least I think Graham and we're, we're, we're pretty proud of it. Um, um, yeah. The meeting house dental, um, the, there's, a, there's a, a tab right on the lower right, lower right at the top and it says educational programs. You can go to the link where, where okay. you can, yeah, there, there is one other, other program was interested. We, we built this mostly for, for the seminar about biologic dentistry because mm -hmm. most on certain topics like say mercury, but there's many other topics, but there's no way we, so we get caught after the seminars and we're usually being pulled off stage because yeah. we have to keep, so we, we built that program that just for these two topics. If you'd like to learn about in and 3D CBCT scans and all these things, yeah. TMJ, CMD, our program for that. So there, there's two different benefits of the industry and the other one's more of the biologic. So they are, they are dentist practices that want to start doing things differently, kind of moving towards a different, is that how how you guys are kind of trying to educate them on how they can go about doing things differently or? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's actually was, um, not necessarily teaching dentists that, you know, might not go over too well, but what I do, do personally into their practice, learning it themselves or passing this information on or, or hiring a nutritionist. Yeah. But I think more on the preventative side dentistry speaking on that two different dental um and that's one of my that, that's uh, this year that I, I think that'll be my first approach to get the nutrition side of dentistry but if dentists want to look just like we, we did 20 years ago because then the the best website in Oregon is the i a o n T in the of oral medicine and toxicology who um, taught us about the are credited with them and we had the mass mass and their suction and ionizers in this that really make, make sure that the dentist is doing all this just re release them on to the public so um, but they're also so the ones that have to find it aomt.org and there's a little put it in your zip code and all, all the dentists are listed on all, mm -hmm. done yeah. database awesome so um, the course on nutrition is for anybody that uh, is really interested in taking ownership of you know their overall health and oral, oral health as well uh, so they can kind of really inform themselves and put into steps in their day-to-day -day life on how they can improve you know, their oral health and understanding why they're doing the things that they're, they're doing, right? Point. 
because um, my entire career, I've been, um, kind of the teach a person in the fish metaphor for weight loss, and they say, can't you just give me a week? week later? But if you don't understand why you're doing it, older stick. Yeah. So same thing. I could tell you, but if you don't really like flossing, and we're just so the the program that we're talking about the different reasons for decay so you can kind of what i'm saying to do is actually important but very, very like succinct step by step. this is how you floss your teeth this is the little mm-hmm. soft these are all the food, foods that you probably should foods that you, you should be avoiding all, all the supple remineralization and not just the easy one so I mean, we talk through these both through some foods. It's it's all, all in the program. So again, A to Z program. Awesome, awesome. I'll add the link to uh, all of the websites that you talked about, the course, and I will um, add a little information so people know, you know, which website is what. Which, uh, but yeah, thank you so yeah. much for your um, for this really informative session here. I think there's a lot of people that will that will really benefit from it. There are so many simple steps that people can start taking towards it. And if you want, you know, to take full control, I think your course sounds incredible. Uh, there is so much value in, um, in just like I said, in understanding why as opposed to just, you know, it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Like teach your kids how to fish, don't give them the fish. Otherwise it's just like, they never can understand. Right, right, you know, learn, yeah. From the effort that it takes or anything like that. So, uh, mm-hmm. so that's really awesome. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate. Thank you for having me. Take care.